Professor Maciej Benash from the Medical University of Lotz discusses his article appearing in the January 2015 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Effects of Coenzyme Q10 on Statin-Induced Myopathy, a Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. Statin intolerance is one of the most important issues for yeah. lipidologists. It is a very uh, large, it is a great challenge um, uh, we have currently in the therapy uh, of patients with lipid disorders. Uh, first of all, uh, we do not have the clear definition of statin intolerance. Second, we do not know uh, how many patients with statin intolerance we have in our everyday clinical practice because there are many differences concerning the number of patients. Most of the patients were excluded from the randomized controlled trials with any adverse effects after statin therapy. Therefore, uh, in randomized controlled trials such as Metero, HPS, try the number of patients with statin intolerance with adverse effects after statin therapy were was um, uh, very low, uh, 3 to 5 percent. However, according to the uh, observational trials, we, we know well that the number of patients with statin intolerance might be even up to 15, 20 percent. We know well that we do not have a clear definition of statin intolerance. We should always consider patients uh, in, in this definition, within this definition. We should always say about the, about the kind of symptoms, adverse effect we might observe at the statin therapy. And for example, we know well that uh, the most often observed um, effects after starting therapy is weakness of, of muscles uh, such as uh, um, muscle tenderness, uh, soreness and many many others. We, uh, we might also, we also know that we might, uh, we might observe the increase of creatine kinase and according to that there is a many different um, um, recommendations concerning how to treat and how to manage with this uh, with these patients. Within this definition we should always say we should always consider and we should always discuss what happened with patients when we discontinue or reduce the statin therapy because these symptoms should uh, should resolve um, after 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 discontinuation or reduction of uh, of statin therapy or reduction of dose and finally what will happen when we when we when we start when we start the uh, our therapy our therapy again uh, finally, we should always we should always remember that uh, not only myalgia syndromes, not only syndromes concerning uh, connected with the muscle pain, are observed after statin therapy. There are many different uh, situations. There are, there are many different symptoms we might observe, um, including sleep disorders, cogn cognitive disorders such as um, um, rashes, uh, uh, um, hair loss uh, at, at our um, uh, female patients, and many many others. That is why, in my opinion, we should always consider also these symptoms in the definition of statin intolerance. We also know well that there are many different conditions and situations uh, which might increase the risk of uh, statin intolerance, which might increase the, the risk of, mm. with statin-associated myalgia and statin-associated uh, myopathy, because uh, um, within this condition we know that, that, that the exercises that hyper and hyperthyroidism, liver disorders, um, um, kidney kidney failure and kidney diseases, alcoholism and many others might increase the risk. We also know well that within these conditions there is also a problem with the vitamin D deficiency and coenzyme Q uh, deficiency. It is connected to the fact that uh, uh, during statin therapy, we might observe the reduction of dose of uh, of coenzyme of coenzyme Q. We included uh, all randomized, all available randomized control trials up to May 2014, and uh, we included the trials with with statin therapy versus placebo only uh, in patients over 18 years old. Uh, in which we have uh, full data concerning the, uh, the uh, um, plasma creatine kinase activity as well as um, um, statin associated uh, myopathy and myalgia in this, in this group of patients. Uh, and uh, what is important, according to our meta analysis and systematic review, uh, we noticed that there is no association between, no significant association between statin associated myalgia. 
and uh, coenzyme Q supplementation, as well as there is no significant association between um, plasma creatine kinase activity and statin and um, coenzyme Q supplementation. However, we should also consider that these trials were, there were very heterogeneous. What is more, uh, there were different time of observation in this, and different follow-up in, this, in these trials. There were also different concomitant disorders and conditions in this group of patients. Finally, the, the doses used in these trials were only up to 400 mg per day. Finally, and the uh, available randomized control trials were limited by the number of patients uh, included in this in these trials and finally the group of patients included in the meta-analysis was also quite small but it is only connected to the fact that the all that these trials that uh, that are available concerning the um, evaluation the analysis of the association of coenzyme Q supplementation and studying associated uh, myalgia and that this number of trials uh, uh, and studies is very very limited. Therefore uh, taking into account the, our results what we can say uh, we can say that there is no effect of coenzyme Q supplementation at those up to 400 on the improvement of uh, statin intolerance uh, taking into account uh, uh, creatine kinase um, ac uh, plasma activity, plasma creatine kinase activity, and uh, improvement in the in the resolution of of, of uh, muscle pain. However, uh, sh according to these results, I think we cannot recommend coenzyme Q um, uh, supplementation in this group of patients because we still need further trials, um, uh, very well designed, you know, with the. Um, coenzyme Q 10 doses uh, over 600, uh, 600 or 1,200 uh, 1, uh, milligrams per day because according to very small trials, uh, very small studies, mainly, mainly perspective uh, um, studies, we know well that such dose might be, might be effective in this group of patients. However, we do not have any randomized controlled trials which might confirm it and we still need further trials with larger doses of coenzyme Q10 uh, in order to finally answer questions whether this such supplementation, whether such therapy might improve uh, symptoms uh, in, in starting intolerant uh, patients. And we hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.